the last race of the weekend. The Senior X30 final gets itself lined up, ready to go on the starting lineup. And well, what a weekend it has been for the season. And for Gus Lawrence and Ian Eichmanns, who are starting this one on the front row, it's all down to who can really take it off the front row on this one. Well, interestingly, it's a split grid as to who's been able to save a fresh set of tyres for the final. Gus Lawrence is on old tyres. Heikmans is on new. So is Clement Utran. Atkins on old. And then you've got Louis Johnston Cool, Marlo Bollier and Danny Carinini all on new tyres. McQueen is on old tyres. Bishop, Luzio, Griggs and Calterin all on new. Moya is on old. Short Goldstein, who I cannot believe has got a cart out there after the damage he suffered. But Goldstein is out there on new tyres, as is La Suede Mehdi. Uh, Julian Carmen on old tyres. Eduardo Vila has actually gone for a very weird strategy. He's gone for a new left front and a new right rear. So he's actually gone diagonal for his new tyres. So that's a really interesting challenge for Eduardo Vila. He's the only driver to do it. Delati and Jupp have gone for new. So too have Littlewood, McLaughlin, Weisenberg and Storescu. Jelly is on old, as too is Andrea Pinovado. Aaron Ferrazzano, we're told, will not take the start after the damage he picked up in the superheat. That's very unfortunate. Tudiska and Platin are both on new tyres for the left. And then Martiniello, Schotten and Garcia are all on old tyres, as is Diogo Pinto, who made his way into the final, along with Adam Rahali. And then Besson and Gonzalez are on new tyres on the right as well. Uh, on left, sorry. But Gus Lawrence and Ian Eichmann's the front row of the grid. And then this man in third, Clement Utran, he is on the crest of a wave here, the Frenchman. This could be the biggest day of his career so far. It certainly could be. Getting the last few words of encouragement there by the team. The VDK driver certainly has had a superb weekend for Clement Ultron. Fourth in qualifying, best result. Well, he took a qualifying heat win, second, third, fourth uh, as well over the course of it. Uh, and certainly scored very good points. This man here starting alongside that second row. Uh, Kali Atkins, again, another driver you've got to watch out for. This year's IAMI Euro Series Senior X30 champion uh, he is one who could also do the double here this weekend uh, with a championship and an IWF championship as well. Louis Johnson Cool, who starts on the third row of the grid. It went to tears in the uh, super heats, but right now he's back fighting fierce. He is still in a superb starting spot. And if anything, starting on the inside row is a slightly better one. I mean, as a cool stature, they look pretty cool there. They really do. Marlo Bollier, sixth position on the grid for the Victory Lane karting team. Looking really sized up for the opportunity here from that third row of the grid. Goodness knows what we're about to face as we go into the battle again. Sandro Perez will be starting from seventh on the starting grid. Uh, sorry, no, my apologies. Danny Caranini will be starting from seventh on the starting grid in the energy course. The man who won this accolade two years ago on home soil in Adria. He would dearly love to get the job done again here in Portimao. Having won in Italy, he would love to win in Portugal. And from seventh on the grid, that is more than doable for Danny Caradini. On brand new tyres, he has a good shot of it. So he'll want to take full advantage of the opportunity. And there is the man himself. Lightning could not describe this guy any better. Caden McQueen for Croc Promotion. He's been the king of Britain. He has been a ruthless, efficient warrior in Europe. But this is the moment he's been waiting for. He genuinely could get this done from eighth position on the grid and make it back-to-back -back wins on the same day for crop promotion. He's just won Harry, He's just seen Harry Bartle get the job done in junior. Can he do it in senior? But what about the man who you can never discount? Macaulay Bishop. Last year in the Euro Series, he went from dead last after not setting a time in qualifying or having his times disallowed, I should say, to charge through from last to the victory. Can he do it again in the IWF final? And what about the man starting beside him, his teammate for Dan Holland Racing, in the Lando Norris cart. Marcus Luzio, the man who won the Winter Cup at the beginning of this year. To remind everybody just how fast he can be, this is going to be a really exciting battle as the competitors gear themselves up for the Senior X30 final, the race of the week. Everybody in X30 racing wants to win this. If you win this, you're not a world champion, but you are the ultimate IAMI warrior. You certainly are indeed. Well, plenty of action coming up in a few moments' time. There as well on your screen, the 203 Ruben Moya who will be starting this one and then on the uh, seventh row of the grid. He'll have Sam Shaw alongside. You can imagine a lot of stress going through the minds of these drivers. Palpable race about to get underway. 20 laps as well. 
also about to start there on your screen, all the way uh, down the grid in 12th place. Eki Kaltrin as well. A lot of work he's got to do as well for a driver who has certainly had a good one, but he seems to be jamming along to something in his helmet there. Uh, Pre-race uh, ritual, maybe? Potentially. But I'll tell you about the man who's going to be starting directly behind Ruben Moya, and that is Ellie Goldstein. I'm amazed they've put a TV cart together for him, and he's going to be able to go out there and push to the maximum. Can he win the IWF final in what we think might well be his final drive in X30? It's been a fabulous an incredible career for the Belgian who starts in the midfield. Don't forget, he won the FIA Motorsport Games gold medal last year at Paul Ricard. So it'll be a really exciting battle for all of the contenders. Gus Lawrence and Ian Eichmanns. It'll be a fabulous situation for all of the contenders. So Gus Lawrence, Ian Eichmanns, Clement Utrant, Kelly Atkins and Louis Johnston Cool, the top five at the moment. Will they still be the top five at the end of this final? Certainly that. Well, Junior X, well, Junior X, Senior X, <laughs> we just had that. There we go. Senior X, the final race of the day, about to get underway as they make their way through the, uh, the grids. Now, let's take you through the starting lineup for this one. British kart champion in the uh, X30 category. Gus Lawrence starts this one on pole position with Ian Eichmann starting alongside for Clement Ultron and Cali Atkins. Louis Johnson cool for Mello Bollier, Danny Caranini and Kader McQueen on row number four. Macaulay Bishop from Marcus Luzio. Luca Griggs and Heike Kalterin on row six with Ruben Moyer and Sam Shaw on row seven. Eddie Goldstein, they repaired the car and he starts alongside Lisboa Medi on row number eight. Julian Cameron and Eduardo Villa go from row nine with Francois Dalati and John Connor Jupp on row 10 with Marcus Siddlewood and Finn McLaughlin on row 11. Hakan Weisenberger and Dino Turascu go from row 12 with Maxim Gelli and Andrea Pitavano on row 13. Adam Felizano, unfortunately not taken to the track, deemed unfit to race, which is a big shame for him. Alessandro Tedisca starting on the 14th row on his own. Hugo Martinello and Harry Platten go from row 15 and they round out the top 30 with James Shotton and Aaron Garcia on row 16. Hugo Besson, Diego Pinto, Eloy Gonzalez and Adam Rahali round out the 35 remaining carts that start this race and certainly we're looking forward to the 20 laps that is about to unfold anything can happen in x30 senior and it probably will it'll be a very interesting and intriguing battle now as everybody that has been fired up all the way through this week now finally gets their chance to dance in the portuguese sun pf internationals gus lawrence eichmann's grand prix ian eichmann's vdk's clement Utrad. Crop Promotions, Carly Atkins, Premium Kartings, Louis Johnston Cool, Victory Lanes, Marlo Bollier, and Danny Caranini for Energy Course. Seven teams in the top seven positions with a whole host of teams and drivers trying to charge them back. A very big obrigado to the marshals around the course. We'll give the opportunity to thank them very much indeed for the week. What an amazing performance from them. We can't race at all without the Orange Army. And they've been absolutely phenomenal in the shade of the Grand Prix circuit where Sir Lewis Hamilton became a world champion for the seventh time. And an absolutely incredible opportunity awaits these youngsters as they duel for supremacy once again. Senior X30, one of the most competitive karting disciplines in the world. And 20 laps and a phenomenal 30.6 kilometers will decide who is going to walk away from the Cartodromo Algarve in Portugal as the Miami Warrior for 2023. Gus Lawrence, Ian Eichmanns, Clement Utrad, Kalai Atkins, Louis Johnston Cool, and Marlo Bollier are going to quest for the front of the grid. But keep an eye on the former winner of this event, Danny Caranini from P7, the British Charger, Caden McQueen, and the boy wonders for Dan Holland Racing on their Lando Norris carts. Macaulay Bishop and Marcus Luzio, we come off the final turn. What can Moyer and Goldstein do from far behind? Let's find out. We race for the IWF final in Senior X30. A great start for Eichmann. He gets level with Gus Lawrence and makes a beautiful launch round the outside to take the lead. Eichmann's in front of Atkins. And down a third comes Gus Lawrence as they work their way through the turn three hairpin. There's a little bit of contact further oh. back and a spin oh, and several. several carts have gone off. That is one of the VDK drivers and there's already a little bit of a band between the two and then one of the TB carts has come off further back. We've lost Calteron, we've lost Littlewood, we've lost Piravano, Platten, Schotten and Hugo Besson. So several drivers involved in that one. There is Harry Platten. He's got a cart that's damaged at the rear. There's no way yeah. that he's going to continue. No, no way at all. He'll have to bring that into the pit lane. Big, big shame then for Harry Platten and a load more drivers as well. 
big, big shame for all of them. I, I'm amazed at the amount of drivers that went off there. It just shows how competitive they are and how fierce they were going in towards turns one and two. It's very easily done there. The recovering 237, that is Hugo Besson, who's managed to get going again, but all the way at the back of the field, a big, big shame. Clement Ochoan did not get a good getaway. He's dropped down to eighth place as well. He's been swallowed by the pack, but for Eichmanns and Callie Atkins, they lead the way from Gus Lawrence. Malo Bollier there in fourth place. He's got Caden McQueen just behind as well. So again, it's still a good start for some big names out there, but it's a long way to go in this one. Still 19 laps left of this race. Hugo Besson will be given the technical flag on this lap around. He's lost his side pond oh, there, there it is. is. So uh, a well done to the marshal for recovering it. How about the drivers in the field? Look at Caden McQueen trying to get on terms with Marlo Bollier as McQueen finds himself in P5. It's Eichmann, Atkins, Lawrence, Bollier, McQueen, Bishop, Johnston Cool, Caronini, and Ellie Goldstein in ninth position. He is charging ahead of Clement Ultra and Connor Jupp and Ruben Moyer. There is still so much to do in this final. We're about to come to the end of the second lap. And with 18 to go, it is very exciting stuff. Let's look back over the race start on the left side of your screen. You can still watch the race live on the right as well. But Eichmann's with a perfect start. Utrand swapped by the field, as Anthony alluded to. But this is where it all kicks off. Watch in the background as you're going to see several drivers get very close for comfort and then just one slight nudge. And that's all it takes for the field to kick itself out to the scenery. There we go as uh, we lose uh, first Besson, then Pirovano. And uh, Calteron got spun out there, so too did Littlewood. The three of them have managed to get going again, but sadly Besson, while he has recovered, is not going to be able to continue in that lead of the race, in that, in that position, because he has lost a side pod. And there's a spin there, it's Calteron that's actually gone around in the middle there, so Henke Calteron dropping right to the back of the field. The misery of his earlier race has just come back to bite him again in the final. It certainly has, and Finn McLaughlin as well, kicking up the dust on the uh, entrance towards turn number eight there. Marshalls again, despite it being a long weekend, still eager to run and collect the uh, debris on the edge of the circuit. Again, brilliant job by the marshalling team all the way throughout this uh, week of racing. Back here, though, with that lead battle, and here comes Atkins to the lead. No, Icon slams the door closed. Atkins looking like he was going to force the issue. No, he stayed behind in second place, not able to get that move done, and Gus Lawrence still remains there in third place. The same as Malo Bollier, Ken McQueen, McCauley Bishop, Ellie Goldstein, who's up into seventh place. Again, phenomenal drive for Goldstein with that damaged car. But here comes Atkins, gets alongside. No, again, backs out of it. Smart drive there uh, from that one. And McCauley Bishop goes to the outside there. The outside of Malo Bollier, never going to work. He slots back. So Bishop finds himself in P6, still dueling away, but he's in front of Caden McQueen. Eichmanns now leading from Atkins. Then it is Lawrence, Bollier, Bishop, McQueen, and Ellie Goldstein. This is definitely going to get fever pitch before too long. Goldstein was enraged after the superheat. He really wants to put himself into a winning position to bow out on the top. And if he's going to do that, he's going to have to go up against the Euro Series winner, Kalai Atkins, and his fierce rival, Ian Eichmanns. Atkins gets the lead as he goes through on the inside of turn one. Gus Lawrence trying to go with him to get past the guy on the outside. Ian Eichmanns trying to keep this on the far side. He stays in front of Lawrence, and that's enough to give Marlo Bolli a third position in front of the British driver. But watch for Bishop, watch for McQueen, and watch for Goldstein. They're going to be on the charge as well. And Goldstein nudges to McQueen. Come on, let's go after the guys in front. Atkins is in the lead of the race. There is the proof of the pudding for Hugo Besson. His side pod is missing, therefore he gets the technical flag. But it's Atkins, Eichmann, Bollier, Lawrence, Bishop, McQueen and Goldstein. Very close racing in these early stages of the race. Still a long way to go though in Senior X30. And right now the European champion is leading the way. Atkins looking very strong here. He's looking to become the Warriors final champion as well, but Eichmanns will certainly have something to say about that, checking over the shoulder for both of them. And immediately Atkins going to fence him and look at Eichmanns now switching to the outside. He tried to get the run and now he's gonna go the long way round. That's never gonna work or is it gonna work? Because now Malo Bollier goes down the inside and Eichmanns has to concede the spot. He tried the long way round and it did not work, and now he goes down into P3, and now he's got the close company of the man who started alongside him at the start of this race, Gus Lawrence, right behind him. It's a truly valiant effort, that is for sure. But it'll be a really tricky one to hold on to. Down through the hairpin, Eichmann still there in third behind Marlo Bollier. 
Can Bollier actually pull off the win here? The victory lane driver from France doing such a good job in behind Kalai Atkins. Atkins trying to make it two wins out of two for Croc Promotions across junior and senior, but he's really going to have his work cut out for him to hold on to this. It's been a long time since anybody has won Senior X30 in the same season in both the Euro Series and the IWF. But this is a tricky char a tricky task now for Kalai Atkins. Bollier trying to signal to Atkins, stop defending, come on, we can get away from the guys behind. Let's just go for it. Atkins trying to back him up. This is a nervous time for Kalai Atkins. He leads, but he knows it's going to be tricky to hold on. Eichmann's in third, Lawrence in fourth, Bishop McQueen, McLaughlin, Utran, Karanini, Johnston Cool. What's happened to Goldstein? He's all the way down to 16th now behind Gonzalez. It looks as though the TV car has really struggled to maintain the pace. Malo Bollier's uh, not happy behind Kalai Atkins there as Gus Lawrence tries to go down the inside through turn seven. Uh, that wasn't going to work because it's a very fast corner. We have seen the moves through there, but uh, Eichmann slamming the door closed. Uh, Bollier trying to get past, but Atkins continues to defend that line and it's just backing him up into the... Uh, the, the clutches of Ian Eichmann's Gus Lawrence still there as well. Macaulay Bishop, here's a look back at that frustration. And, well, yeah, understandably, <laughs> Malo Bollier just eager to get on with it, really. Well, it's lap seven, and he is defending valiantly Kalai Atkins. So Bollier is absolutely fuming because he's got 33 drivers right behind him trying to get through. So Bollier trying to sweep round for the undercut to try and get the lead away. Not going to happen. Eichmanns and Lawrence still very present in third and fourth position, right in behind Bollier. Bollier knows they're there. He doesn't want to live. He doesn't want to leave a gap wide enough for Eichmanns to have a look through on the inside line. So still they duel away, but Bishop in fifth position in front of McQueen, McLaughlin and Karanini. Then Connor Jupp and Sam Shaw. Louis Johnston cool. Ahead oh. of Vila and there's a bit of a tangle there as up the inside. There's Atkins holding the line. Bollier trying to chop across Lawrence. Eichmanns has already gone through and now Bishop will squeak through on Gus Lawrence. That puts Bishop in a fourth position but on the exit. He's going to run wide off the curb. Is that going to be enough for Lawrence to get back through? It isn't. Bishop has held on to his nerve there in fourth place. So now it's Atkins versus Eichmanns. Eichmanns again gesturing to Kali Atkins. Stop defending. Get away from the pack. Then we can race for the victory. But if you're just going to hold the line, there's not much I can do about it. So here he goes again to go round the far side to try and get the momentum to get back through on the crop promotion. Eichmanns doesn't want to see a race full of defending. So he drives round the outside to try and get through on Atkins. He can't make that break. He really can't. I mean, this is dramatic stuff here right now. Atkins, the European champion. You've got uh, Malo Bollier in third there, who's the, uh, the French senior champion this year in the IAMI uh, Euro Series France. And then you've got Ian Eichmanns as well. You've got Macaulay Bishop, who was junior X30 British champion here this year. And you've got Gus Lawrence, who's the senior X30 British champion this year, all fighting for the lead spot in the IWF here at Portimao. This is absolutely beautiful stuff. Oh dear, and there's a tangle. The two carts off, the three. That's Villa. It is, Eduardo Villa is off the track. Oh, there's three carts off. Uh, it's the 288, that's Louis Johnson Cool. Oh, it is indeed. Oh, dear. And that's uh, Connor Jupp as well. So Connor Jupp, the former winner of the I Games here at Portimao. Vila and Louis Johnston Cool have all tangled together. They're out of it. Bollier swarming around behind Kalai Atkins, desperately trying to come through. Eichmanns is sitting there in third position, waiting for the chance. Bollier is going to try and force the issue that Eichmanns couldn't make happen. Can you crack the egg and then put it into the recipe for the victory? This is going to be a tricky one for Bollier to try and get through on Kalai Atkins. You can tell the frustration. And again there for Malo Bollier, who is absolutely furious. And again, more confrontations happening here between Connor Jupp and Eduardo Villa and Louis Johnson. Oh, there's the move. Yeah, and again, it's happening again. While Malo Bollier is still there in second place, nothing's changed. So no moves at the moment but uh, Atkins still leading the way. And you can just feel the frustration, I can feel the frustration between Malo Bollier as Connor Jupp receives a warning flag uh, for that incident that's happened. So they may be talking about it, but the stewards have already dealt about it. Look at Macaulay Bishop. He has suddenly got onto the back of this trio and Bishop is sitting pretty, ready to take the IWF final off all of them. Don't forget, this is his first ever appearance in Senior X30 on the European stage. And it would be in the IWF final, wouldn't it? Now Eichmanns is gonna go long because that's what Atkins is gonna send him. Here's Bishop. Watch for Bishop. He's the danger man up the inside of Eichmanns. Eichmanns will have the inside line for four, so he holds his position for 
the moment, but Eichmanns is right there in third, trying to get through on Bollier and then trying to get through on Atkins. But these four are absolutely glued together. Behind them in fifth place is Finn McLaughlin, the man who's never raced at Portimao before this week. So this is a really tough challenge for him, but the Irishman has been steadily climbing through the ranks. He's had a really tough week after the misery of the World Championship. What if he could suddenly bag an incredible result here in the IWF? It would be the icing on the cake of a very tough season, but he'd be quite happy to swallow this slice as again, Bishop goes up the inside of Eichmann's, no change. Yeah, nothing at the moment. It's all lying astern. And again, you can just imagine the cork is gonna pop in this champagne bottle at uh, one way or another, but right now it's still going the way of Atkins again. And look in the slipstream, Malapolier closing right in, but Atkins closing the door. Bollier goes to the outside again, tries to get the switch back, but again, the gap's not there. Atkins is positioning that crop promotions car absolutely perfectly to stop any attempt in any corner. Not going overly defensive, but just positioning it in the middle of the track, making it impossible for anyone to get past. Here's a replay of uh, what happened earlier on. Now, what Look how happened? close yeah, to the gravel good. they yeah, are as they come close. through that final turn. They are literally flirting with the limits of what is acceptable. Here we go. McQueen having a go as oh. he tries to come around the far side. Bishop is going to be there as well. You haven't just got McQueen in there, you've got McLaughlin in there. McLaughlin's up to third. Look at the way he's worked his way through. And now Lawrence tries to cut back through in front of Caden McQueen. And you've got Sam Shaw in the mix there in eighth place as well. Danny Caranini trying to catch them. So Eichmann's has tried to get past Atkins. He couldn't get there. Bishop has tried. He couldn't get there. Bollier has tried. He couldn't get there. Maybe it's time for the Irishman. Finn McLaughlin to have a go. Here comes Bollier. Gets up alongside Atkins. Oh, and he gets it. the lead. He's done it. Round the outside there before they even reach turn number two. Malo Bollier now leads the way. Atkins will have to retaliate here. But after all the pain that Atkins put Bollier through, there is no way that Malo Bollier is going to allow Atkins to get back past. He is going to absolutely plant that cut on every single apex. As Eduardo Villa also sees a warning flag for that uh, contretemps that was there earlier on. McLaughlin oh, there's going to gonna be three wide. Three wide here. McLaughlin's off the track. He gets loose. And through goes Eichmann, who plouts into the back of Bollier. Bollier and Ackmans retakes the lead. You've got to be so careful, Ian. That is so nearly a front fairing coming off the bracket. You've got to be so careful not to get that loose. If the front fairing is loose, you'll end up with a five-second penalty. There is the warning flag going to Eduardo Vila, who's already out of the race, so he doesn't change a thing. McQueen gets up the inside of Caranini. That puts him up into eighth position once again. Across the line, seven to go. McLaughlin holding his nerve into the first corner in fourth position in front of Bishop and Lawrence. But the top three have broken clear again. Atkins, Bollier and Eichmann. It's as you were. Bollier has done everything he can to stay in front of Atkins, but Atkins got him back. And so now, Eichmanns has got to stay very calm and collected in third position. They've got to work together. You're not going to see a lead change yet because Bollier and Eichmanns have to spend the next two laps catching up to Kalai Atkins once again. I think it's only going to take them about a lap, actually. Yeah, I think so as well. They're going to close back in almost immediately, especially with that slipstream. But uh, they don't even need that. They've closed in already, working together. You saw the conversation. Now, Eichmann's again was furious on the start-finish straight on that last lap, throwing his hands up in the air at Malo Bollier, saying, don't go defensive. And uh, Bollier's still going defensive despite this. It's worth reminding everybody that Eichmann's is on new tyres in third. Yep. Bollier is on new tyres in second. Kalai Atkins is on old tyres in the lead. He is trying to keep this together for the entirety of the remaining six laps. Kalai Atkins has a real mountain to climb as he passes the one in the background here at Portimao. Bollier tries again, gesturing to Kalai. Stop defending. This is not going to help. And Eichmann's tries to go the long way round. Bollier tries to get into Inside Kalai Atkins, but Kalai Atkins knows exactly what he has come to do. He wants to win the IWF, he wants to put it to bed, he wants to win both accolades in the same season, and it would be the fairy tale of fairy tales for the man who a couple of seasons ago was struggling even to get into the A final over the course of an IAMI X30 weekend. So for him to come through and win the Euro Series and then potentially the IWF in the same season is an unbelievable fairy tale. But he is making it reality. Can Bollier and Eichmanns find a way through? Not if Kalai Atkins has anything to say about it. Meanwhile, Bishop has crowbarred his way into fourth position ahead of McLaughlin and Lawrence. This is certainly one heck of a race. Their confirmation, Malabolia and the new set of tyres. Atkins on the used. 
And again, just seeing the two different racing lines there and how much he's having to defend it. And again, to the outside here. Oh, and Atkins just closes the door. I tell you what, if you looked up stressful in the dictionary, you'd see a link to this video uh, and this race on YouTube. Because what on earth are we seeing here? It's just pure stress all the way throughout for Atkins, who has got these used tyres trying to defend. For Malo Bollier, who is trying to get past and is <laughs> refusing to get through. And for Eichmanns as well, in exactly the same boat. None of them can get any uh, lead weight on any one of these drivers. And Atkins is just leading the way and doing what he needs to do. This is such a tough battle now. Four and a half laps remain in this IWF final down the hill. Atkins still parks the cart in the middle of the road. Fourth position now is Lawrence. He's been able to get past McLaughlin and Bishop. Bishop back down to B6 with Sam Short now emerging in seventh in front of Packham Weisenberger. Great recovery drive from the Frenchman who started all the way down in 23rd on the grid. Then it is Laswid Medi who is there in ninth position in front of Danny Carinini and Caden McQueen. Here we go. A big challenge coming forward. But still no change. Kalai Atkins is a unmovable wall in this race. He certainly is. And again, I'm just watching his driving style here. It's controlled. He's not pushing too hard. And again, he's not slowing the car on the apex or anything like that. They're all pretty matched in their pace. But again, he's just, he's just doing a sterling job of positioning it. Now, again, you can still see the, the, the battle for fourth and fifth. And now uh, there's a new tactic now coming in for Bollier and Eichmanns. They're now going to just take the normal racing line. They're not going to follow what Atkins is doing. And they're just going to try and use NASCAR tactics to help themselves here. Just push each other along. Push yourself through and get it done. And there he can see it. Now think, think, come on, let's try something different now. Let's try and work together. We can do this. Kalai Atkins is the brick wall. Bollier and Eichmanns are the missiles, trying to work their way through to the front of the field like Mario Kart. Can they make it happen? They come over the line through turn one. Atkins knows they're coming. Bollier's got good speed. He goes left, tries to get alongside. Atkins will not let it happen, and it's absolutely no change again. No matter what they throw at the Jamaican up front, Kalai Atkins has held his nerve and kept his position. Right, Eichmanns is going for second. Right, you've tried your best, Marlowe. Every trick you've tried has been good, but it's not good enough. You let me lead. I'll break him down. Give me some support. We'll go get him. I'll force the issue, and he's going to do it straight away. He gets right on terms with Kalai Atkins. Again, Atkins holds the inside line. So, Ian, you better roll those tuxedo sleeves up. You're going to need something special to get past this boy. You certainly are. And again, he goes to the outside here, leaves the gap open there, and Malapolia is going to go back down the inside. So, despite Eichmann's only getting a, a half real attempt at it, over a lap, he's not going to get an attempt down into the slipstream moment here. And this is where they've got the best chance of getting it done, getting this slipstream and getting alongside, but they've got to get it down the inside and Atkins just refuses it. And again, they're not going to use the slipstream. Eichmanns doesn't take the uh, slipstream into effect there. He stays on the outside. He's going to lose touch with them here. He's going to look for the slipstream here now. Not enough goes to the outside. And all the meanwhile, I've got to say, Lawrence McLaughlin, Shaw, Weisenberger, and uh, Lasway uh, Medi are all closing in now. This is going to be such a nail biter to the flag. And in fact, Lasway Medi has managed to get the fastest lap of the race on the Carding 45 machine. Watch for Bollier. Here he goes again. Atkins going to the inside line once more. You've got to find a way of breaking him down because Atkins is backing you back into the pack again. Lawrence is now fourth and he's right on their tail. McLaughlin in fifth, not far away from Shaw, Weisenberger, and Lasway Medi. Karanini in ninth from Goldstein, McQueen, Moya, Utran, Gonzalez, and Bishop. Very unfortunate for Bishop to be down in 14th. Great work from Eloy Gonzalez. He's 14th from 35th on the grid. One last chance. Here we go. Let's see what happens then as they go down in towards the last lap then. Here they go down the hill. It's still Atkins who leads the way, but right now he's still got that immense pressure. Gus Lawrence with the best chance here of getting down the inside. No, he thinks against it stays there, and there's still no change within the top three. Malo Bollier has got to pull something special out the bag here to get through. Maybe try something that he's not tried so far in this race, but he's just losing touch now. He's nowhere near the back of Atkins. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. They've stayed right back, but again, a huge lunge there, maybe. No, but here come around the outside. Gus Lawrence, he's looking for a podium and no says Eichmann's Eichmann says there is no way you're gonna get this move done but Atkins now just needs to do what he's been doing all the way through this race park it on the apexes push it forward 
don't worry about anyone else and you can become both the IAMI Euro Series champion in Senior X30 and the IWF champion as well. Out of the final corner, United Kingdom's Kali Atkins wins here in Portimao. The IWF champion in 2023 in Senior X30 goes the way of the Briton and what a drive that is from him. Absolutely superb. When you were there, when Kalai Atkins struggled to make it into the A-Final to see what he has achieved over these last few seasons at Croc Promotions, he's gone from the back of the grid to the front, not only winning heats, not only winning finals, winning the IAMI Euro Series, and he follows in the footsteps of Gabriel Stilp to become the IWF winner in 2023 at Portimao. What a result for the Jamaican Euro Series winner, IWF winner. He is the king of Senior X30 in 2023, the ultimate IAMI warrior. He certainly is. And look at that, celebrating all the way round the lap. He makes his way back to Park for May and he will be crowned IWF champion in 2023. What a result that is after 20 exhausting laps of racing. Kali Atkins, the 201, the European champion in the IAMI Euro Series, takes the win by one tenth of a second from Malo Bollier for the Victory Lane karting team. Ian Eichmanns, despite his best efforts, finishes there in third place after starting this one on the front row. Unfortunately, he does get that podium spot. And as well for Gus Lawrence and Finn McLaughlin, because remember, it's the top five here this weekend who do get the trophies. So uh, that's a reminder as well to the minis, the masters, and of course, the juniors, that the top five all come away with a trophy at the end of this one there. You can see Connor Jupp just giving the uh, support there to Callow Atkins and for the crop promotion team based out of Wilton Mill in the UK, a brilliant, Brilliant stuff for the team, and they themselves cannot believe what a season it's been for 2024. There you can see Gricey giving the uh, words of support and congratulations. And there, the rest of the team. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Crop Promotions have been on top form in 2023. Kalai Atkins sweeps the board. Miami Euro Series winner, IWF winner. That is such a hard task to get done. And I have to say, I am so in awe of young Kalai Atkins. What has he just achieved? It's all just going to bubble over. It's all going to hit him in just a few short moments time. And I have to say, that is actually one of the toughest, that is one of the toughest Senior X30 finals I've ever seen with some amazing driving, particularly from the likes of Marlo Bollier and Ian Eichmanns. They threw everything they could at him. They couldn't make it happen. They couldn't get their way through. But you know what? They kept it clean throughout. They didn't do anything stupid. They didn't do anything dirty. They just got themselves into a good position. Unfortunate that we had so many difficulties at the start there with retirements for James Shotton, Harry Platten, Hugo Besson, and then uh, Andrea Pitavana recovering. Then the spin for Henke Kalter and watch. There he goes, drifts around. Nothing he could have done about it. I think he actually uh, ended up tagging in there with the Sodi cart of uh, La Suede Medi, who managed to charge his way back into a good position. But uh, a very tricky race indeed. Luca Griggs would join them on the sidelines, as too would Connor Jupp, Eduardo Vila, and Louis Johnston Cool. But up at the front, Kalai Atkins, once he got into the lead past Ian Eichmanns, it was very difficult to shake him. He did lose the lead a few times, but the way he fought himself back into contention was absolutely magical. And I have to say, it was wonderful to witness as Kalai Atkins got the job done after such a difficult, stressful, and tumultuous final. Doesn't matter what Bolly ate, Eichmanns, Lawrence, or even Finn McLaughlin threw at him. It was just masterful. A couple of points, though, to pick up on. Finn McLaughlin, epic comeback. Mm. The Irishman coming from 22nd on the grid to finish in P5. There is the incident in the background. You see Vila, Jupp, and Johnston Cool exiting stage right. Very unfortunate for them. Also worth picking up on Sam Shaw, charging his way back from 14th on the grid to be P6. Packham Weisenberger, the Frenchman, 23rd on the grid, 7th in the final. Absolutely amazing stuff and some amazing comebacks. Another big shout out I'm gonna give. Oh, oh, that was a big moment. That, that, Danny oh, Caranini. Under yellows as well. Yeah, we didn't see that, did we? Danny Caranini skating off the road there, trying to catch up to the drivers around him. But uh, another big shout out I'm gonna give is to Eloy Gonzalez, the Spanish driver who started 35th on the grid. He finished 
14th. 21 places gained. That is one heck of a drive. In fact, that Senior X30 drive was littered with amazing drives. It certainly was all the way to the end. McLaughlin, they're running very wide. Luckily, he didn't get uh, uh, too wide out on that one. And the same for Eichmann's as well. Very touchy moment there where he clouted right to the back of Malibolier, nearly coming away with a nose cone penalty. I think hopefully he uh, just managed to hold off that one. But uh, Bollier as well, just trying to defend his line. And again, just trying to get past the, the, the brick wall that was Atkins, but no one could do it. And he would cross the line the IWF champion, the IAMI Warriors final champion in 2023, as well as the IAMI Euro Series champion in both Senior X30. A superb result and a superb season. A brilliant way to end the 2023 season as well for Kali Atkins. If anything, he is uh, like a mile high above everyone else so far this year and certainly looking forward to it. Well done, round of applause once again for the top five finishers of the senior class in Portimao. Starting with the driver in fifth place, round of applause once again for Fionn McGoughlin! <laughs> Superb result to finish the season for you, Fionn. In fourth place, Gus Lawrence! Representing LGP racing team from Belgium, Ayan Eichmann! <laughs> He's from France. He won two titles on National Soul. He's stepping on the podium in the IAMI Warriors final in second, Malo Boye! And finally, he's been the strongest of them all, all throughout the season, not just this week, Kalai Actins! Well done to you, Kalai. Crack promotion, two titles out of four. Beautiful performance from you guys. In the junior with Harry Bartle, in the senior with Kalai Actins. And that makes it three titles on the international karting scene in the IMA X30 classes this year. As uh, for the last time, we're going to have our champagne shower, as always, ladies and gents. And uh, thank you very much to uh, Filippo from uh, IMA Motorsport, the president and representative for Comet Tires, Juan Franco for the precious help in the proceedings of that podium ceremony. Well, guys, it's about time for a quick refreshment at the end. And already starting, Fionn McOughlin! <laughs> Jump start from Fionn McOughlin. Here you go, guys. Champagne! <laughs> well done. Well done to you guys. As uh, Kala Hackins has already left the podium, and he's going to need to get back for a quick word of... Uh, one better way certainly to uh, finish this beautiful event in Portimao. Well done to you guys. We had a bit of a jump start from Fiona Conklin, but uh, the others were quick to follow. Don't forget as well your trophies and helmets, guys. As uh, can I a quick word with you? As you can step down a little in front of the number one, so I can uh, properly hand you the microphone. Kalai, what a week! What a race! This has been a great season for you as well. Picking up your first title in the IMA Euro. That crazy race, you kept control on it all throughout the entirety of that race. Despite the pressure coming from behind, it was relentless, that pressure, but still you held on. Yeah, I'm over the moon, you know. I can't thank the team enough. Uh, Grice, uh, my dad, my sponsors, you know, they've done so much for me. And yeah, I'm just really happy. Um, unfortunately, I don't have um, the funding for next year. So yeah, a bit disappointed, but... You know, I'm really happy I've won all these races this year and we can finish on a high. You finish on a high, that's for sure. We've seen so many drivers struggling on that track to build a gap and to prevent themselves from uh, overtaking turn number three. But yet, you managed to stay ahead and to block any resistance all over the track. Well, what was the, uh, the recipe for you today? Well, you know, just racing in the UK, you just get used to it. So, yeah, I just applied my UK racing to here and, yeah, managed to hold on. And that's the key. Fantastic performance for you. Kala Actins, ladies and gentlemen, your winner of the IMA Warriors final 2023 in the senior class.